The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Open, the one and only show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, for 107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. Welcome to the great show that we have in store for you. Leading off the show will be Johansa Fernandez, the research coordinator of CUNY's Institute for Health Equality. All right, and health equity too. And she's here to tell us more on health and how we can avoid many illnesses. After that, the founder for the Center for Sustainable Energy, Dr. Mike Selinger, uh, is gonna be informing us on how to use sustainable and efficient energy in urban communities. And then part two of our special interview with R&B living legend, Dionne Warwick on Backstage with Bob Lee. Music Mondays continues with musical guest, Kevin Estwick. So stay tuned to all this and more. Headed your way because we are now. Good morning, everybody. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee, and you know, you're watching Open. Today's Monday, October 15th, 2012, and uh, we got an amazing show lined up for you. Our guest, uh, Kevin Estwick, is here. He'll be performing for you. He has the, the closest instrument to the human voice. And we'll be interviewing with him, and then part two, Dion Warwick, and uh, she, it's going to be fantastic. If you watched part one, it was all that and a bag of chips. Now, we got um, uh, another artist that we're going to be talking about in a little while. They'll be coming up. Lots of surprises right here. And we got the powerful gist of, of music in uh, our generations. Cool Clyde, how do you feel about that? Uh, our young people are learning about uh, the music that's up and coming. I think that is very key and very important that our young people learn about what music is all about. That's loud. So, other than that, Bob, how you been? I've been good. You know, we came off of... Uh, uh, Circle of Sisters, COS, it was at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Uh -huh. Everybody came down. The, the gospel concert was fantastic. The R&B concert was fantastic. And, you know, <laughs> other than that, you know, the Giants and Jets, I'm happy. They won. Yeah. I'm kind of a little sad about the Yankees. Uh -huh. Jeter broke his ankle. So yeah. No captain, no run. He's supposed to be out for the rest no of the uh, season, right? Yeah, but hopefully they can come back and battle back and, and, and win. What about A-Rod? I mean, he's supposed to be the highest played baseball well, player. What, what's said, the no, story? No runs, you know, uh, they're not producing right now. And, you know, people have their slumps, but this is like a bad uh, time of the year to be in a slump. So hopefully his bat will wake up, or all of the bats will wake up, and they'll, they'll hit some home runs and get some base hits. Mm -hmm. What about the debate? What do you think about that with Michael? Well, that's coming up uh, tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming up, the presidential debate? Yes. Oh, you're talking about the other one that just passed the well, vice well, president. But you can chime into that real quick. Why are, you, why are you asking me questions? Well, I got to ask you questions. I'm supposed to be asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the debates coming up? Well, I think, think? It's, I think it's good. I think that Obama <laughs> needs to step up and have a little bit more backbone. But did you hear about they shot into his campaign yes, office in Colorado? Yeah. yeah. It didn't get too much news play on that. What's the story with that? Well, there's a lot of things happening. You know, um, these candidates want to win. In other countries, they do things that are a little more worse. I don't know which is worse, but I don't think stuff like that. I mean, you just have a, a total separation in this country. But remember this, I'm going to say this, united we stand, do I have divided to say we rest? fall, that's what they we say. We have to come together and get that bipartisanism uh, uh, working and, and, and move this country in, in, the, in, in the right direction and I, move it forward. I, I think, think we're, we're making a lot of progress right now and we need to continue that progress. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that they need to talk about poor people because I don't hear that come up in the equation. Mm -hmm. I think that's very key. I think Obama needs to come out and speak truly what's in his heart. I mean, he has to step up because if he doesn't step up, I think that we're going to have a four years of a disaster. So I think he needs to step up and speak clearly about poor people. And I think they need to find a solution to racism. 
it's a lot, it's a disease. And I think they need to treat that. And that's what's really going on in this country. That's big, big division going on. Huh? Yeah, so I think we need to stay tuned on that. But I'm looking forward to this debate and hopefully he comes out. But if he doesn't step out strong, I think, I just think that he's gonna wind up going backwards and wind up slipping yeah. on his words. Did you hear about Captain Barkey? Yeah, I heard about that. There's a record called Now Left Joe. Yeah. Now Left Joe. How There's ironic an is that? Over, over by Connors Avenue in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, up by Co-op City area. Now, you know, Joe was the ex, I got you, Joe was the ex-boyfriend uh, of his girlfriend. He was the ex. Yeah, the ex, how so. ironic that was. Yeah, so there was a song about that. I guess things got kind of heated and things took place in that parking lot over there at the hotel. Well, allegedly, yeah. two people had gotten shot. Yeah. And, and killed, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Cool Clyde. Well, thank cool you, Clyde man. on the way in right here. All right. We'll be right back with uh, Johansa Fernandez of uh, CUNY's Institute for Health Equity. Don't go anywhere. It's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Be free. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Nice, Dad. Charles! Nice dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. So here are the keys. Congratulations, it's officially yours. I'm sure you'll have many happy years here. Except for you. Because you'll be gone three years from now, struck down by the same disease that got your father. So you won't be around for them. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test. But you didn't have it. Okay, who wants to check out the backyard? For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together as one will start to see some change. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people connected interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. All right, welcome back to Open, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from WBLS. Our first guest is research coordinator for CUNY's Institute for Health Equity. And today, she'll tell us more about helping underprivileged uh, communities with the uh, High statistics of illnesses. Please welcome Johansa Fernandez. We welcome you to the show. Hi, how are you? <laughs> well, nice to see you. Now, you're doing a lot of wonderful things. Tell us about the, the, a little bit about the organization before we start. So we're the CUNY Institute for Health Equity, and mm -hmm. although we are housed at Lehman, we are a CUNY-wide institute. Yeah. And what we do is we offer volunteer internship opportunities to students in particular, but we also mm. have a lot of community-based um, or capacity building um, things going on. And mm -hmm. so one of those things that we have going on now is the infant mortality study in the South Bronx. So as you may or may not know, the South Bronx has the mm -hmm. highest rate of infant mortality in the entire United States. Wow. And yeah. our goal is to figure out <clears throat> what exactly it is that is affecting these, these rates of infant mortality and yeah. why is it that it's higher within the South Bronx. Is it diet? What, what, what is it? We are unclear as to what it is. However, the South Bronx has an influx of intervention mm -hmm. programs, just anything that may be targeted towards mm -hmm. infant mortality. However, they've, they've been unsuccessful in lowering that rate. Uh -huh. Yeah, so wait a minute. Now, how long has you, have you been working on this? Uh, well, we just recently began. So I'd say maybe about six or seven months. Mm. Right. Okay. So it's been something that's been kind of on our radar, mm -hmm. but now we're really aiming to so really target it. When will the studies uh, be completed? We are, we are 
trying to recruit about a thousand women. So as soon as we recruit that that thousand women, mm -hmm. then we hope that then to start doing data analysis and things of that nature. Okay, so uh, a thousand pregnant women or okay, so women who have had children already. Right. So women who have had children already. So mm -hmm. these women should have been 18 or older at the time of birth and their child should be between 0 and 24 months once they have the screener done. And yeah, that yeah. is just to deem eligibility. Yeah. Wonder what it is. I mean, they talk about that a lot here in the, in the, in the Bronx. Right. Infant mortality. Mm -hmm. um, well, in a lot of places throughout the five boroughs, but more so here in the Bronx. Right. So the, the South Bronx actually has a higher rate of infant mortality and adverse birth outcomes than the entire city of New York. Mm -hmm. um, and they have the highest rate of the nation in total. Wow. And so our aim is to figure out exactly what it is. Is it diet? Is it that you, there's a food desert that you don't have access to, to fresh fruits and vegetables? Is it safety in the community? Is it the relationships that you had or something that occurred yeah. while you were pregnant that may have affected that? Wow. And it, well, there's a lot of things in the South Bronx. You have that uh, the plant over there that uh, yes. I think it cleans the, right. the water and that, that uh, that's you know, interesting. Let, it, emis it right. emits a lot of uh, pollution. Right. Do you think maybe that can be? I, I can't say that that is the cause of it. However, just to kind of piggyback off of what you said, there's, uh, the South Bronx also has the, the highest density of um, crisscrossing um, expressways, highways, et cetera. So imagine all the pollution of all those cars uh -huh, while yeah. you're pregnant. Yeah. It, it may, it, I think it's just kind of a whole host of things. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to figure out a well-rounded approach to what exactly is it that's going on. And are we getting the foods that we need in right. the South Bronx? Right. You right. know, a lot of people complain about the bodegas. They don't have all the healthy, nutritious foods that, right. that we need. Right. And how far yeah. is it for you to, to, for you to purchase nutritious mm -hmm. foods? Yeah. Is it too far of a distance for you to walk? Is it somewhere that you wouldn't walk because it's unsafe? So I think we're looking at a whole host of things. And, and in that, we also did a, an environmental audit. And by that, what we did is have some of our researchers go out and actually look at the different WIC offices, which offer support to pregnant women and to women that have had children. Mm. And are they accessible? Was there graffiti in the street? So this is looking at everything in the environment in graffiti, the South Bronx. What, is, what does that have to do with that? So it's, it's just a matter of would, would a woman have a better... Um, a better birth outcome if she lived in an area that didn't have broken glass on the street, which is something we looked at, didn't have graffiti on the walls. Would that, would that differ, mm -hmm. her birth outcome, versus someone that maybe lives in a suburban area that doesn't face any broken glass, yeah. any graffiti? So what is the difference? Does the environment play a role, or is yeah. that not a role at all? What about health? What about the diabetes and all those things that, uh, that ail a lot of people in our community? Right. I think that that also, my thought about that is that it's also within looking at the environment, also looking at your accessibility to food. So if we only have, if your closest thing is McDonald's, if your closest restaurant is Burger King, if it's the Ken Kennedy fried chicken, mm -hmm. how do you then figure out what do I eat that's best for my baby and yeah. myself? So I think that diabetes will also play a role. And we do ask the women if they were diagnosed with gestational diabetes or with mm. just diabetes before they Kennedy fried pregnant. chicken is pretty good, you know. I mean, not every day, but you know, every now and then you go Kennedy fried chicken and get some chicken and uh, get, you know, corn on a cob and all that mm. stuff. But no, you don't want that every day. Right, right. Yeah. You don't want that every day. And if that's something that is the only thing that's within your reach, then we have to take that into consideration. Yeah. What about uh, domestic violence? Does that come into play? Yes, it does. So we also ask um, several questions about domestic violence, and, and we also ask about incarceration. So mm -hmm. how, how is it that if, if your partner, husband, boyfriend um, has been violent against you, how does that then affect the way, the way that you care for this child and the way that, that your pregnancy unfolds? Mm -hmm. And we also look into incarceration. If your partner, boyfriend, husband went to jail while you were pregnant, how stressful is that for you? And then how oh. does that affect your birth outcome? Stress. Wow. That's a biggie right there. Yep. Stress. Stress is a killer. Uh -huh. So that's definitely, I think that that's not having access to food again, being around a, a plant or having all of these highways nearby where uh -huh. there's so much pollution, being unsafe or feeling unsafe in your environment. Right. That all causes stress. Wow. So you, you have a team of people working with you. Yes, we do. We have... 
Right now we have two um, BSW interns, which is a Bachelor's of Social Work. We mm -hmm. have four research assistants, and we also have research scholars that are at the institute mm -hmm. that help us with this. What part do the social workers play? Well, the BSW, as, a, as my training, I am a social worker, and so I oversee that they gain some clinical exposure to these women. Mm -hmm. So their, I guess their position ranges from looking for resources for these women to actually sitting down and talking to these women. And if yeah. an emotional reaction comes up, then how do you as a social worker react to that? Well, uh, another thing comes into play while I'm, while I'm sitting here thinking and talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, what about health care? Are they getting the proper health care. We spoke about nutrition and all the things, the environment, the things that uh, can um, maybe disrupt a pregnancy in our community. Mm -hmm. But what about health care? Are they getting the proper uh, health that they need, the health care that they need? Well, health care is also a big component of, of the survey that, that we administer to these women. And I think that especially with the ACA coming into play, if or when ACA? the Af Affordable Care Act I got it. Um, coming into play, I think that Healthcare is definitely a big component of that as well. And I think that in the South Bronx, the luxury of the South Bronx, um, for lack of a better term, they have a lot of community-based mm -hmm. organizations. They have the Planned Parenthood, they have the Urban Health Plan, they have the, um, the Soundview Medical. So they have quite mm -hmm. a few um, areas that they can go, whether they are low income or not. But the, my question is, not so much healthcare, but your access to health care. So yes. do I miss my doctor's appointments because I feel unsafe? Do I decide that it may be best for me to just stay home because I heard someone was shot yesterday? So, you know, you may have that health care. But environment plays a, a right, large part. Right. So I think w our, uh, what we're trying to look at is a well-rounded approach to exactly what affects mm. or trying to figure out from these women themselves what affects. What are the demographics that we're looking at? What's the age limit there? I mean. And Between what over, ages? Over, over 18. So you 18 to 65 if you had, if you had a child. There's no limit past 18. Gotcha. The only thing we're okay. looking at is that women had to have been 18 or older at the time of birth. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I, we don't have any limits. Are you looking for volunteers? For volunteers to To help out what you're doing? To help out what we're doing. We're more than welcoming volunteers and also we're looking for participants, participants. for the study as well. Right, right. Okay. Give us some information. What okay. do we call? So... If you are interested and if you think that you are eligible for the study, then we call 347-577-4008. Mm -hmm. And um, I, will, I will or one of my BSW interns will either pick up the phone and screen you right then and there and set up an interview date right then and there, or you leave a message and we get back to you within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And so these women, as long as you're 18 or older, have had a child within 0 to 24 months mm -hmm. um, and have lived in the South Bronx during your pregnancy, then you are eligible for the study. There you go. Is there a website? Yes, there is. So mm -hmm. it, you can go to www.cunyhealthequity.org. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also flyers, and you'll, you should see a whole okay. host of those things. See, that was beautiful, right? <laughs> Lots of great information there. Uh, yeah. social, not only a social worker, but a research coordinator yeah. for the CUNY, CUNY Institute for Health Equity, uh, Johansa Fernandez. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us. You'll come back and share more information when yes, the sir. results come out? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. We have to take a quick break, but uh, when we come back, Dr. Mike Seliger is going to be here with us. Join us right here on this very stage. Stay right there. This is so cool, Dad. Awesome. This is so cool, Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who take you just as you are. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. Would you dream of something I did? Are you on your way to the mall? Only nude pics. Send me some. Text me. 
Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year, I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Find out how you can live United for Education. Give, advocate, volunteer. Go to liveunited.org. Do you wear this? Did you find a flashlight in the batteries? Yeah, there's a flashlight. Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. And welcome back to Open Everybody. I'm your host, Bob Lee. Our next guest is the founder of the Center for Sustainable Energy. And on October 19th, we'll be at the 8th Annual Alternative Vehicle Technology Conference and Expo at the Ludwig Theater right here at Lehman College. And now with us is Dr. Mike Seliger. We welcome you. Good morning. All right. Sustainable energy, what, what are we talking about exactly? Well, we're talking about alternatives to fossil fuels, both in the built environment and in transportation. Uh, both of these are very important here in the Bronx in particular because of the impact, as your previous guest had indicated, of the impact of these things on the health, health. of our citizens. Yeah. Okay. So you, you, this will eliminate fossil fuels or? Our goal is to reduce and reduce the impact of fossil fuels through new technologies, through encouraging energy savings, mm -hmm. through whatever it takes, through partnerships with other organizations that are doing the same. Doctor, what are some of the new technologies that we're talking about here today? Okay, in the vehicle field, and as you know, we're, we're looking to have our eighth annual alternate fuel vehicle conference on Friday here at uh, mm -hmm. Lehman. Uh, uh, there are more and more electric vehicles, including some uh, that have been piloted right here in the Bronx. Uh, yeah. uh, Down East Seafood was the first company in the United States to, to have a totally electric box truck. A uh, box truck. Box truck. Is that, is that the, the hybrid? No, hybrid uses both. Totally electric. Totally right. electric. Uh, uh, they got some support. We helped them to, to seek financial support from from the State Department of uh, Transportation and uh, they were able to purchase uh, the first and now they have two box trucks other companies have followed suit and the company that they bought that first box truck from has now agreed to open an assembly plant to create more box trucks right here in the Bronx mm -hmm. so it, it has an impact on jobs it's an impact on our future in any number of great ways. One of the things that I love about that assembly plant is that it's also going to have the potential to put on those electric chassis school buses. Whoa. And I look forward yeah. to the day when those school buses will not be spewing all kinds of oh. poisons to our children and the poor bus drivers. Sometimes you can see it. That's right. <laughs> the black yeah. smoke yeah. that comes out That's of right. the, those mm -hmm. mufflers. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can't get behind this bus oh. here. <laughs> Right. But, but that's, 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 that's fantastic. I mean, I know the Obama administration was uh, um, for putting a lot of that stuff out, electric uh, cars and the batteries and the manufacturing right. of a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and this will be right here in the Bronx. Now, all you have to do is just plug it in. You need an outlet. Um, for electric cars, there are three levels of, uh, of the connection. Yeah. Uh, the simplest in one's own garage would take about 12, 8 to 12 hours mm -hmm. to recharge uh, uh, and can use regular current, preferably 220 rather than 110. Uh, then there's what's called a, a fast charge, which can be done uh, with a more powerful charging in 3 to 4 hours. And then there's a couple of things, including Tesla out in California has something that they can drive those Teslas up 
and in 15 minutes you got a charge. And you really? You go off and go another hundred That's a heck of a miles. charge right there. Yeah, I think it would take about as much energy as a typical block. So, so, so yeah. in, instead of mm -hmm. pulling in and getting gas, you can pull up to these charge stations That's instead right. of gas stations? That, well, uh, in the Bronx, in the South Bronx, there will be at least one station that is a public station uh, that will have a number of different kinds of fuel and charge uh, options. Uh, uh, on Bruckner Boulevard, uh, the company is at Atlantis, uh, and they have a contract to, to build such a station that will have everything from uh, oh. compressed natural gas to these electric charges. There's another technology for the electricity uh, where you would take uh, one battery out and replace it with another battery, uh -huh. and then, the, then they recharge uh, in the time that they need and put that in the next car. Come so on. this is still in, in the works. I mean, they're, they're trying that. to modify it all the time. Now, what if you had like a, um, a generator in your vehicle and you can charge on the roll, on the fly, while you're moving, well, on the go? <laughs> uh, not bad. Uh, there's always a little bit of that because uh, every vehicle has the, the way that you charge the battery as the you roll along. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, hybrids at least have what's called regenerative braking, which is uh, a way of further recharging yeah. as you go. Um, uh, Toyota actually uh, put a small uh, solar mm -hmm. uh, uh, installation on the roof so that it could uh, recharge a small battery that operates the windshield wipers mm -hmm. and other things. Um, so it's a second battery that gets charged by, by like solar. It. Yeah. This is a good time to be living in this uh, technology age, huh? Things Let's hope really, really so. Fast. No, it's <laughs> slowing down, and it's one of the scary things. Is it uh, slowing down? Uh, well, California is way ahead of us. Uh, the economy is not helping us right now. They, the Volt is not selling as fast as they thought that it would. They slowed down their production, yeah. but it's expected to pick back up. And every time, of course, that the price of gas goes up, more and more hybrids and electrics find their yeah. way into the sales. So tell us about this eighth annual Alternative Vehicle Technology Conference and Expo. Right okay. here at Lehman College. It's going to be at the Lovinger Lovinger Theater, right? It'll be in the Lovinger Theater uh, with at least 30 vehicles parked outside. Vehicles that range from, can I show this? Yeah, sure. Uh, these were a few of the vehicles that we had last year. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 there'll be three different General Motors vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, plus uh, things as small as uh, uh, an electric motorcycle to as large as a uh, couple of Department of Sanitation vehicles that are either electric or hybrid, uh, uh, including the first electric street sweeper in the city of New uh, York. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so 30 vehicles. Uh, the, the keynote speaker for the conference is uh, Francis Murray of NYSERDA, the, the state's uh, uh, environmental research mm. arm. Uh, we have two major panels followed by four breakout sessions. The first of the panels shows how innovations in the Bronx itself are part of, uh, that demonstrate and, what and, it is. That's going briefly, to what will people learn that day? People will learn about the potential, the opportunities. Uh, they will come away mm -hmm. with both a, a sense of where, where they can go to, to purchase or learn more or get training. Uh, there's a wide variety of things that they will learn. Thank you so much, Dr. Mike Seliger. All righty. Thank and you. And they'll be at the 8th Annual Alternative Vehicle Technology Conference and Expo at the Lovington Theater. And that's right here in the Bronx. What's the date again? Friday the 19th. Friday the 19th. All right. That was a part of our two-part interview with the five-time Grammy Award winner, R&B artist Dion Walwick. I want you to enjoy this. Check it out. So what are some of the things that you, uh, you do in order to prepare? You're backstage. Well, I usually get backstage. Um, some people yell, scream, and grunt, no, and they, exercise, yeah. push-ups, sit-ups, or whatever. No, you know, in fact, I was on tour with Johnny Mathis. And John is a stickler for vocalizing before he goes on stage. Yeah. And I came and down. You, oh, 
Oh, uh, yeah. Beautifully <laughs> said, too. Beautifully. And I, I asked him, I said, well, I mean, you spent almost 40 minutes warming up. Yeah, yeah. I said, you've already done a show. How do you do that? He says, well, don't you warm up? I said, yeah, my warm up is my first song. <laughs> it is. It's, it gets the vocal cords ready to go and do what they got to do. There you go. I couldn't imagine me doing scales right, right. at this point in time. Because you, 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 you've been in it. You know what to do. Well, you know, I, I'm not the only, I know that people like Mathis knows what to do. Ella Fitzgerald used to warm up. Mm -hmm. um, who else was it that I, has that voice of voices? Um, I, Gladys even warms up. Gladys, yeah. You know, it's, it's like, I don't know how you guys do it. I don't, you know, and it's like, well, we're all made differently, so you do what you do, whatever makes you yeah. fly. So you be in concert with, with, with a number of people. Well, you, normally you're by yourself. Yes, right? by myself. Yeah. Well, Nobody I books do. anybody else with you. You just, you know, you are it. Yeah, this yeah. seems to be. <laughs> but, but when, but you, when I, people, you, but, you hear them in their rooms. Oh, yeah, I do. Things. You know, or I'll go in and start talking and say, well, we can't talk right now. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. and it's true because your vocal cords are used differently when you talk uh -huh. as opposed to singing. But when I get to my dressing room, basically what I do is I check makeup, make sure your hairs are in the right place. I ain't got that much to go in the right place. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, just make sure that the presentation is there and, and I get yeah. dressed and I go on out on the stage and do what I got to do. Yeah. Say my little prayer backstage and there out there I go. God's with you all the time. All the time. He sits right here. There you go. Now, who are some of the people that you can confide in, that you can talk to? Because, you know, once you're in this type of business, you can't even walk down the street by yourself sometimes. You know, I do. Oh, yeah, I do. I have not lost my individuality of who I am and the things that I enjoy doing. I go to the supermarket. I run into yeah. all my classmates there. <laughs> I say, hey, how you doing? You know, I go to the movies with friends. I go to restaurants. Oh, they'll do that. Yeah. You know, yes. And, and I don't mind saying hello to them. I'm a people person. I like people, and uh, and I, I have the reputation as well. I just, when you get out of line, I'll put you back in. Line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say, come on in. You know, so come you on back. So you don't wear a costume or a fat suit or anything. No, no. <laughs> but yet you've done so many wonderful things. Now, now. you have a new CD out called Now. Called now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's just, I'm so proud of this one. It's. Um, Basically a commemorative CD for 50 years in show business. Did you get that, folks? 50 years. <laughs> That's five. Yeah, five and a zero. Decades. <laughs> it certainly yes. is. I, I'm, I still, every now and I say it, it's like, has it been? Yeah, it's really been 1962. And um, you still look great. I, mean, I feel good. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you. You look good. You feel good. She smells good, too. <laughs> Dion. <laughs> oh, it is my own fragrance. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know what I'm smelling it. Dion? That, that's it. Yeah, let anybody know. Pick up some Dion. Yeah. It will be out very, very soon, so keep your eyes open for it. But you can get it on my website, www.dionwarwick.info. Okay? Thank you. I got enough commercial. It smells really good. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell it, but it smells good. Oh, do it sell it. Go ahead and sell what's it. it. What's it making me do here? It's making me relax. Yeah, it's making me relax. Uh, see there. <laughs> Being Bob. <laughs> hey, he's blushing. Oh, the camera people are blushing back here. <laughs> yeah, no, so this, I'm on, I'm on tour. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing all six continents. And it's my way of saying thank you were being supportive of this career for well, as long as they have. And I couldn't think of a better way to uh, commemorate it than through music. You know, I feel that um, that's what got me here. And uh, this was going to be for the rest of me. And what we did was I did a poll of people, uh -huh. you know, a general poll. I would be truly, this is God's honest truth, I'd walk down the street and I'd stop people. And I'd ask them, do you know who I am? And they say, yeah, you're Dion Warwick. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have a Dion, favorite Dion Warwick song? And they would give me two or three songs. And I did this while riding in a taxi. I did it with a taxi driver. I did it with a bus driver, truck drivers, 
my friends, uh, people within the industry, uh -huh. um, my doctor. I asked everybody that I could think of to give me at least three songs. The on wall works independent poll. Exactly, <laughs> that's what it was, yeah. and it did work because the songs that really uh, were the majority of the songs that were favorites, mm -hmm. this was represented on the CD. Wonderful. So, and there, I mean, surprises, really surprises. There are a few songs on there that I said, what? But hey, that's what people want to hear. Yeah, yeah. So how many do you have on there? Twelve. Just 12 songs. And you got some of the people that you've worked with in the past. Oh, course. yeah. Oh, that was the joy. You know, I uh, had an opportunity to again work with Bill Ramon, who was the engineer on 99% on of my recordings, who now wore the hat of producer yeah. on this particular CD. And then to revisit songs that I recorded very, very way back in the day, written by Backrack and David, and nicely so, I asked that they would give me two songs each that they had written without each other, individual of each other. Wow. And they each submitted two songs to me. And those four songs are on the CD as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful mixture of, of songs. And the reason it's called Now is because the older songs were brought into the 21st century mm -hmm. without disturbing the integrity of the song itself, wow. but bringing it musically, rhythmically, and the focus into the 21st century. So I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy this one. I love it. Well, pick up Dion's new CD. Pick it up now. Exactly. And it's called now, too. <laughs> What's your favorite on there? Uh, of course, I, 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 I should have asked that. They're all my favorite. And, you know, everybody asks me that. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and it is true with me because Songs, with the exception of the four that I recorded, the back racks and uh, David's, um, they're all my children. You know, these are babies to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I literally gave birth to them. Yes. So I can't have a favorite child. I so there it is. <laughs> they're all my favorites. At least you can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, finally. <laughs> what would you tell people who are looking to get involved in this business? Because this can be a tough business. To I was about to say, business. it ain't easy. No. Okay? Um, the medium today is so completely different than when I started. I mean, we had radio that took the chance and played records of new artists and played new releases. Um, the computer has taken over. It is a generation of youngsters who are literally dominating the industry now, which is okay. You know, that's what In makes the world, the world go around. Yeah. And I think that because the sounds that are being created today by these kids, um, first of all, it's, it's not my cup of tea, so my ears are not geared for that, but they are sending out this information to kids who are their age. They're servicing their, their age group, their peers. So um, there's nothing I can really tell these kids today mm -hmm. because I don't know their side of it. Right, right. You know, I'm still sitting where I feel comfortable and where I know how things and what things should be done. Can you tell them something about that? If you really, really find something that you like, stick with it. Oh, because absolutely. when you stick with something long enough, something always happens. No doubt. You know, just understand <clears throat> too that yeah. this is a job. Yes. And you, when you have a job, especially one that you feel you want to enjoy, you perfect it. You have to hone your craft before you jump out there, you know. Yeah. Everybody can't be Gladys Knight. Everybody can't be Diana Ross. Everybody can't be Luther Vandross. You have to be who you are and perfect that mm -hmm. and say, okay, here it is. You know, and, and go out there and, and seek it. You know, nothing is, I think Billy Preston, I think it was, had the record out, nothing from nothing means nothing. nothing. <laughs> and if you don't have something, it can't be with me, okay? Mm. 
And I think that that is a, a mantra that could be used sincerely by any of these children who are making decisions to get into this industry. Mm -hmm. Always know that you have to have something to offer. And it ain't easy. You know, you're not going to get a yes immediately. No. You may get a bunch of no's. A bunch of no's before yes. you get that yes. Don't but get it, discouraged. If you want that yes, you have to keep at it and keep at it and keep perfecting, keep perfecting. And so somebody is going to wake up and say, they got something. Tell us where we can get your CD before we go. Okay, uh, you can get it on the internet. Ha, ah, I'm talking internet. Um, YouTube, iTube, all them tubes. <laughs> and eventually, if, if there are any record stores still open and available for purchases right. of recordings, certainly can go to the record stores. Thank you so much. This has been Backstage with Bob Lee with Dion Warwick in the house. Check out a new CD. It's called N.O.W. Now, we'll be back with some more coming up next. Yeah, welcome back to Open, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee. The 7th Annual Breast Cancer Awareness Walk, hosted by Women's Academy of Excellence High School, will take place Monday, October 2nd at 10 a.m. on Orchard Beach. And now the beat goes on and on and on until the break of dawn with our Music Mondays. You know, our next guest is a saxophonist working with the children to make a difference. And here to perform is Kevin Estwick. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. Word is born! Yeah. What up, what up? <laughs> Kevin Eswick, <laughs> word is born. All right. All right. When did you start playing that wonderful thing there? Oh, uh, jeez. Too long ago. Maybe 14. 14. Way back when. I ain't going to tell you when that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was a few years back, yeah, right? Just a couple. And how did you pick up the closest instrument to the human voice? You know, it started speaking to me. I had a relative who played it, got free lessons, and um, happened to start making beats yeah. at the same time, and they all just started to work together. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you, you move around, you do, you play with bands and things I like have that? a band. I've been playing with a band called The Scheme for about three years now. Yeah. Um, Co-founder, lead saxophonist, part-time manager. Uh, everybody works real hard and does their own role. I'm also a performer in the Traveling Guitar Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful organization. Uh, helps to keep music alive and, you know, the youth and the mm -hmm. schools uh, by giving donations. 
throughout the country. You and, know? and there's a, a founder. Who, who's the founder of that? Uh, Damon Marks. He started yes. the program about a year ago, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, it's just taken off. And you guys have been traveling all over with that. I mean, all over the place. Uh, in fact, uh, we've been to a couple of schools here in the Bronx, actually. Um, we just recently gave a donation to uh, uh -huh. Celia Cruz uh, High School. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, we're uh -huh. trying to do it all. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll also be giving a donation as a result of a collaboration with the, the USO uh, later on in November. Um, it'll be in Germany. So good, good. trying to go worldwide with there it. There you go. Absolutely. Now, you're into creativity. How important is that in teaching that to people who are up and coming? It's the source of life. Mm -hmm. It's it's what makes. You mean to tell me I just can't pick up a saxophone, just do it? Maybe you could, but you probably wouldn't know what you were doing, so <laughs> you wouldn't really know how to do it uh, as best as you probably could. I and don't need to know about the business. Uh, if you don't want to make any business, that's uh, perfectly fair. But uh, you know, I know a lot. Uh, a lot of us have decided that we want to try and make some sort of living off mm -hmm. of uh, you know, a, a part of our culture that, that yeah. you know, that's been so foundational. So but what do you tell youngsters who are learn the business. Who want to get involved? In learn the business to protect your art. Mm -hmm. if, if it's that important to you, otherwise get a different job. Yeah. Period. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about your career and what you're doing and, and where you want to go. Where I want to go is where I am right now and way beyond. Uh, I consider myself, a, excuse me, a multimedia Artist. I thought um, you were a multi-millionaire. That's what I'm working for. <laughs> <My man. laughs> well, you are. It comes in many forms. That's it doesn't right. have to be dollars all the time. It could be in the mind. It <laughs> could be in the soul. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, this is my main axe, the saxophone. Uh, yeah. uh, like I said before, I compose beats, uh, original and samples, mm -hmm. functional on the bass, uh, edit my own music videos. Yeah. It's. Uh, I believe that what we put into our minds, uh, entertainment, uh -huh. education, it really affects how we uh, treat the world, how we interact with the world. So media uh, is just as important as the food that you put in your body. There you go. Now, you combine with the new and the old? You have to. Who are some progress. of the people that you, you looked up to in coming, like the Thelonious Monks Ooh, and all that? Oh, boy. Thelonious Monk, I love him. And I'll be honest, it took me a while to learn that, but that's what makes me love him so much. What's so different about his music, though? Because he it? was absolutely himself and he didn't have to know that at the time but he was there in the moment and there's n you'll never find anything like it you'll deeply involved in the improvs myself or, or are you asking me about mr monk mr monk oh well i don't think you have to ask that question <laughs> <laughs> i think he knew what he was doing yeah, yeah. absolutely but that, um, that's what the, turned you on about there's everything there from the thelonious improv? monk to oh i love Im improv I mean, well what, what really got me into it was uh, you know i'd start listening to all my favorite songs and i'd, I'd keep hearing all these different melodies and huh, there's no string section in that jazz song but why not and yeah. then I just started to do it uh, yeah. in whatever form I could. So, uh, you know, everything from Thelonious Monk to Rage Against the Machine to yeah. it's a, there's only 12 notes in the Western, uh, West, Western ear. So uh -huh. try to explore them all. Uh, uh, what about call and response? Mm. How did you start learning about that? Like if I said something like, and you'll be able to play this? Let's go. Uh, ready? Help me. You know I love you. <laughs> I want to be your man. You have what it takes. Then we'll keep it like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what improv is all about, and call and response and all that stuff, just uh, well, feeding off of one another. And that's community building, in a nutshell, mm. uh, and, yeah. and that's how, historically, people have come together. It's like a com musical conversation, you it, know. It, it, it really I say, hey, what's happening? What's you say, on, oh, brother? well, this is like <laughs> this, you know. Well, how did that come about? Well, it came about like this, da da da, da. Say what? That call and response. Oh, I love it. Building yeah, yeah. And people do it with raps, too. Let me hear you say, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all over the place, and we don't uh -huh. even recognize it. Um, but I, I think it's just a reflection of how important everybody is. Everybody mm. must be to everybody, because we all build right. something with each other. And is that old or new? Now, we spoke about the Thelonious Monks and all the people who, who, who brought it up and brought it together, Absolutely. and some of the people that you learned from. Who are some of the people today that you would like to work with? Mm. 
I'd like to work with everybody. Honestly, uh, I think everybody's got a, a talent, some sort mm -hmm. of gift, jewel. Um, you know, if you're out there, somebody likes you for some reason. I'd like to see what what uh, yeah. what makes that work, and uh, if I can combine what I have with it. Yeah. But what turns you on right now? You get the, the rap game, the R and B. You know, house music. If you house music doesn't have saxophone. <laughs> right? It's funny you say that. Actually, uh, Saturday, you doing something with it? <laughs> 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 That's a different show. Um, but I, uh, uh, if you were to walk into my room at any given moment, you'll hear dubstep, you'll hear hip hop, you'll hear uh -huh. Jimi Hendrix, you'll hear Lightning Hopkins. Uh, I just keep my, my player on shuffle and let uh -huh. it all soak in. Now, do you get involved in those beat wars? I just came up with the name. I don't know if that's a, a battle, you know, the beat battles, beat wars. Been there, been there, done that, and that that has its place. People are gonna start using that. Right? <laughs> no, we have a beat war down at such such. Come on down. That's right. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a time and place for everything, I yeah. believe. Um, Since you make a lot of beats, I love making beats. It's it's uh, it, it's one of my favorite things to do. To be perfectly honest. Are but, you selling them to anybody, or you what are you using them? With, I'm for? actually uh, in the process of developing my own company, Madhouse Multimedia. Um, you can catch us on Facebook, uh -huh. um, MadhouseMultimedia.com. Um, beats, uh, services. Uh, I'm also an audio engineer, uh, and I do music videos. So, oh, look at that. Um, uh, multimedia production house. Can you uh, work cool Clyde's equipment over there? Whatever's needed. Whatever's needed. <laughs> <laughs> you got a beat for him? Okay, right, well, I got some lyrics for you. All right. Um, can you hit us with another song? If you don't mind. What song are you going to uh, perform? Do you mind if I give some words? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to give uh, the words to a, a tune that I wrote recently. It's going to be out. Uh, the music video is coming out in about a week or two. Uh -huh. um, hope you enjoy. Uh, I, we're just going to play it off some records, and uh, we're going to make it live right here in a moment. There you go. Good. All That's right. What, what are you going to play? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, say some words of substance. There you go. I hope. Do your thing. All right. All right. Word is born. Yes, sir. You. Uh, yes, 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 yeah. Test, test, microphone check. I can't hear myself, but I'm still funky fresh. Can someone turn me up? Or maybe it don't matter. I don't even know. I'm not just a rapper. Anyway, I'm here to say some real important things and you uh, write them out. Foul, about to get into the group. They got robotics, fiber optics, artificial intelligence. Half the stuff you know is irrelevant. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, they got robotics, fiber optics, artificial intelligence. Half the stuff you know is irrelevant. Who's bankrolling the president? Who's wiretapping my phone and watching me through the internet? Who's been selling us cigarettes? Who's the commercial sponsor for all this ignorance? You get it yet? Who's been pulling the strings? Who's telling you that if it ain't about money, it don't mean a thing? Who's mining the bling bling from Africa? Kids getting limbs chopped off so we could floss? You living in a fantasy world, you sound soft. Taking this stuff back to the source, and we about to get off. Thank y'all. <laughs> Man's doing the move. Bodie I'm your Bar. background dancer. We about to crush Grove. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been now, a pleasure. Traveling Guitar. TravelingGuitar.org. TravelingGuitar.Foundation.org. All right. Check it out, folks. Doing great things for the kids. Keeping uh, the music alive. Kevin Eswick, Word is Born. Peace, peace. Say it again. Yell it. Yell it out. I can hear you. Dios music in the house. Ah, right, there you go. Respect. Hey, Kev. Thanks so much, but they're wrapping me up real quick. That's all the time all we right. have for today's show. Many thanks to all of our, our guests and viewers. And don't forget to tune in to an all-new Open Wednesday with Darren Jaime. All righty. And you're going to take us home with the saxophone. <laughs> Always remember this, which was God's gift to you, and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. I'm the Dr. Bobby. Catch you on tonight right after Lenny Green, 107.5 WBLS. Peace. Kevin, take us home.